I'm Linton Stevens, and I am thrilled to be part of a new research project which is unearthing the lives of seven composers who perhaps haven't had the exposure they deserve. Today, I'm talking to the Sudanese musician, ethnomusicologist, and researcher at Bath Spa University, Ahmed Abdul Rahman. Hello, Ahmed. Hi, Linton. Ahmed, you've been exploring music created by the composer who was born in Sudan but made a musical living elsewhere in the world, Ali Osman. Can you tell me who was Ali Osman? Ali Osman was born in 1958 in Omdurman, Sudan. He was a highly significant Sudanese composer of orchestral, chamber and vocal work that have been performed across Europe and in the Middle East. Osman's musical life began in 1971 as a self-taught rock musician playing guitar and drums. Growing up in multicultural society was a great impression for his music. Sudan is one of the most diverse countries in Africa, culturally, linguistically, religiously, and also, to a certain extent, ethnically. This music diversity enhanced Sudanese music and shaped Osman's experiences as a musician from an early age and later as a composer. So, Ahmed, Ali Osman went to great lengths to become a composer. Can you tell us about his musical background? Osman started as a self-taught rock musician, but realizing the limitation of being self-taught, he decided to study music more seriously abroad. Then he decided to travel to Canada, but since there is no Canadian uh, visa section in Sudan, he had to travel to Egypt to obtain his visa. Facing with daunting requirement for obtaining that visa from the Canadian embassy in Cairo, he decided to apply for the Conservatoire of Music in Cairo, where he has been offered a place to study. Ahmed, can you tell us how he fused elements of African, Arabic and European music influences into his own writing. What did that sound like? Osman music is unique and stand out because of his own musical background. As grown up in Sudan and the, because of the multiculturalism in Sudan, uh, that enhanced um, Ali Osman composition and also because mixing the Arabic maqam with the pentatonic scale, as well as the, his knowledge of Western composition, that is, this mixture make Ali Osman's work is very unique and stand out. So Osman was very dedicated to his orchestra formed of blind and visually impaired musicians. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, he was. For the last 17 years of his life, he was a strong influence on the musical community through his work as artistic director and principal conductor for the Nur Wal Amal Light and Hope Orchestra. This was an ensemble of visually impaired female musicians. So, Ahmed, can you tell us a little bit more about your research into Osman's music? What do you hope to achieve by introducing his work to a wider audience? A focus on Osman music raises awareness of Sudanese musicians who have been constantly marginalized from the world cultural imagination. Ali Osman it's, uh, dedicated his life for teaching and conducting uh, this blind women uh, orchestra, as well as producing his own work abroad for many years. Ali Osman hardly known in Sudan. And by performing his work by uh, the BBC Philharmonic Orchestra, would be an, an inspiration for many young Sudanese and African composer to follow on his footsteps.
Absolutely. Well, Ahmed, thank you so much for talking to me today. I um, heard your preparation of the score for the Oboe Concerto uh, and it was absolutely sublime. So thank you for that and thank you for the work you're doing on Ali Osman. You're most welcome. This is a joint project between the Arts and Humanities Research Council, BBC Radio 3 and the BBC Philharmonic. Do search out more videos in the series because there's so much more music to discover.